Commission issued a statement on partnership. And did you know that six lay partners attended the chapter? Mm. Now, two sisters who were uh, involved in all that uh, are Sister Evelyn and Sister Elaine, who is herself now. Yeah. <laughs> I told you not to worry. Um, could you share with us briefly the developments from these statements? What happened in the congregation afterwards? Afterwards. Well, uh, Evelyn and I were both on the team, the leadership team, at the time of the lead up to the 2003 chapter. And it was felt that it was very important to have the presence of our lay partners there because it was a growing, there was a growing consciousness that collaboration and working together and networking really uh, was essential for our future. And of course, as we said, it went back to our foundations. Yet, the statement at the chapter still called the entire congregation to strengthen these relationships. We wanted them to continue. We wanted them to exist in all the provinces. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes a little. <laughs> and um, after that chapter, we had a consultation with the congregation. And we had refl a reflection on a document that some of you may remember. It was called Passion for Christ and Passion for Humanity. And we asked sisters to express maybe important things in the life of the congregation and where they saw the congregation moving. And as a team, we were called a core commission. We put the findings together <coughs> and they were expressed in? The uh, core 10 points. Do you remember the feedback mm -hmm. from the core commission? Yeah. And we had the... Um, reflections on all the areas that came up from the congregation and there was a very very positive response with regard to partnership and so partnership was one of the core ten points however at the same time there was a call to strengthen these relationships and to include others. Yes, and I think since then, or the past six years, the congregation has been encouraging all parts of, of, the, of the congregation to further relationships with partners. And just a word on partners. We, we had terms like we said, associates, friends, uh, people who collaborated with us in different ways, we moved to using the word partnership and we were encouraging the congregation on all units to involve our partners on a partnership basis, to involve them, to encourage them to come to our last chapters in every unit and to give them not just with us but also responsibility in various ministries and to share more deeply in the mission of the congregation. And I read uh, recently uh, someone wrote mission partners, sisters and they. And uh, I like that very much. We are mission partners and we can see that so clearly uh, in, in the presence here today. Uh, we also um, took a, uh, a, a big step when, on the general level, we hired Christina. And as, as the years have passed, and uh, as we can see from the presentation that she gave, she has been pulling us along 
-hmm. with her and really uh, teaching us and helping us and looking at in looking at our mission and for which for which we are very grateful and she has a oh there you are right in front of me <laughs> and she has a very very important position on the general level for which we are very grateful and we shall continue Thank you, sisters. Uh, I think you made a very important point uh, about Christina, but I think it's true of most of our mission partners. They pull us along. It's not we who pull them. They challenge us. That's why, or one of the reasons why, they are so important to us. And now we're going to take a longer break. The BBC has very kindly um, provided refreshments next door. <laughs> but please stay tuned because when you come back, we will continue with the second part of the program. Thank you. We have, we have Sister Mary Selma, and you come from South Africa. What would you like to tell the audience about partnership in South Africa? Welcome to South Africa. All the way down south, in a small town called Port Elizabeth, where the wind blows every day. It all started in the 1970s with our partnership. And in those days, we called them associates of the Good Shepherd. Because as you know the history of South Africa, we had the apartheid regime. So coloreds were put one side, whites were put one side, blacks were put one side, Chinese were one side, and Indians were one side. So it caused a lot of chaos in our country. And yet before that, everybody lived in harmony. So when the community of the colored people who moved to where our sisters started. The women in the area who were at home during the day thought, let us help the sisters as they started a new mission to collect all those who are at home and to direct them back to church because the spiritual welfare of the people were at risk. And so in the 1970s, it all started. And as time went on, these women felt a great affinity to the Good Shepherd. And in 1991, the first group of lay associates started, a group of between seven or eight women from the community. And I'm glad to say, next year, they will be celebrating the Silver Jubilee, 25 years of service in the Good Shepherd family. So we are very happy for the achievement. They all patting themselves on the back. But after the I count last year, when Felicity came to represent South Africa, she realized the weight she was carrying in being a partner of the Good Shepherd. Because she knew that the world was big. It wasn't only Port Elizabeth. And so when she went back to share her experience of internationality, she enticed everyone to see the bigger picture and to see the whole Good Shepherd family as one. And today we are using her to go around to our partners, even in Pretoria and Johannesburg, to try to recruit them and to see the bigger picture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Florence. You come from Kenya. Yes. Now, we were talking before the program, and you told me that lay partners called the sisters to Africa and were responsible for your foundation there. In 1958, in search for help for sexually molested young girls, lay women and men from the Anglican Church and the Catholic Church are the primary vision of inviting the sisters of our little charity in Kenya. 
throughout the years. You have worked with a registered body by the Kenyan government, which was translated in 1959 when our first foundation began in Nairobi. However, for the last five years, we have taken this seriously in the province. And we have decided to combine our efforts, both the sisters and the lay partners, and share our talents, our giftedness, our diverse professional experience, varied cultures, perceptions, and the exchange of wisdom and the shared word of God. With our shared vision and goal, together we have tried to centralize all the management and administrative structures and all the structures in the province is already centralized through our combined efforts. This has enabled the sisters in the province to go for professional <laughs> trainings, church courses, international experiences, theological studies without, without much strain in the province. But this was born in the wake of our realization that full engagement in administration of our project was becoming an influence to maximum attention to our religious call. Too much work and no time for sale. These friends and the partners have built the Kenya province with the total self-giving in the means of, of the challenges, difficulties, and joy. They have played part in our growth in the province, and we appreciate their contribution in making our history. We have really grown together for the, first, the last five years, and we appreciate the main partners. And now I think we can come back to Melinda, Melinda on hold, and Melinda has been joined by Sister Barbara Reese. And Sister and Melinda, you work together. Melinda, your um, job, if you like, I think it's more than a job, has changed dramatically since that first, uh, shall I say, house mother's job. So, would you both like to share with us? I believe that you are uh, directly involved in mission effectiveness for the mid North American province. And perhaps that spreads a bit wider. Would you just like to give us a, an idea of what that involves for you both? It does spread wide, very, very wide. Um, I am the director of the Office of Mission Effectiveness for Mid North America. The focus, uh, the purpose of our office is to encourage, support, inspire, educate our Good Shepherd mission, our Good Shepherd people, mission partners, uh, for mission, and how they integrate that into the professions and the jobs that they do. We are seeking to not only maintain, but to, to sustain a very bright, vibrant Good Shepherd presence in a world that, as you know, desperately needs us, as we've seen. We reflect on the life and work of Mary Euphrasia and John Eudes and weave those into current and relevant topics of the day and focus on our values of individual worth, mercy, reconciliation, and zeal. This conversation and this expansion became, began with a vision uh, a number of years ago. And um, Sister Barbara, I don't know whether you were going to um, say some things to Sister Barbara, but I can hand this off to Barbara. Thank you, Melinda. <laughs> in, in, in hearing so much about the uh, growth and the deepening of the understanding of mission partners, it occurred to me that it would be helpful to go back a step 
and insert one little piece that I think is important, it certainly seemed to be very important in North America. About uh, more than a decade ago, uh, in order to kind of find ways to work together as, as, a, as, a, as a continent, all the sisters in North America, we called together a group called, uh, they called themselves the Visioning Group. And basically what they were about was uh, sort of like continuing education. For the, for the sisters in North America. And they were all sisters. Uh, during their meeting, something happened. I'm not sure what kind of a, it, it seemed to be, <laughs> something very important happened to them. Because they started to talk about the importance, the urgency of, of the Good Shepherd people, the lay collaborators, that this was not a luxury, this, this, this was a call of the spirit. So what they did was develop a process so that the, the, the sisters in all the communities throughout North America could have a way to talk about, what is this mean? Do, do, are we in agreement with this? Can we, can we trust enough to, to, to move this? And um, so getting all that information back, um, we, could, we could give it back to the sisters, and that was, a, that was a big moment. But it was a moment of education for, and preparation. And then the other thing was it, 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 it called for a necessary change in the visioning group. So they no longer were sisters, they were, they were the real reflection of our mission. So um, that little piece seems important. Thank you very much, sister. Most interesting. And now we're going to move further north in America. And we're going to New York. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I've never been to New York. Well, it's always a first. <laughs> now, sister, you have a reputation. <laughs> Of working of working with young people, volunteers, your medium I think is the training circle and handcrafting justice, but you do a lot of work with younger people to introduce them to the charism and the word. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Please? I'd be happy to, and thank you so much for asking. So many of you know, for almost 20 years now, uh, the mission of economic justice has been really taken up by a trading circle in Australia, uh, sharing fare in Europe, and handcrafting justice in the United States. This has really been an opportunity to uh, invite uh, lay partners, invite mission partners to animate and promote the vision and the mission and the charism of the Sisters of the Good Shepherd. Our mission partners have joined us in so many ways that I never even knew about. Marketing, branding, business uh, strategies, strategic planning, all of these uh, very, very important and helpful skills have been really what so many of our mission partners have brought to the mission of economic justice. Today, we're continuing to look at this, and now we're expanding this idea of economic justice, and our mission partners continue to help us to look at microfinance, uh, using other systems to help women, to help themselves out of, out of poverty. Also, in the United States, we've been really blessed with a group of uh, mission partners, young mission partners, the Good Shepherd Volunteers. These young volunteers have really listened to the voice of the Good Shepherd, have responded in a year of service. There they practice four tenants. These are really challenging tenants. We might recognize them. Living community, spirituality, simplicity, and service. So they model the, the charism and the values of the Sisters of the Good Shepherd. And um, 
I have been pl uh, really blessed to be with the Good Shepherd uh, volunteers for almost 25 years now. And I've heard back from them. They now have used these tenants as a benchmark for their own families. They use the celebrations and the ways that we uh, express the charism of the Good Shepherd, uh, Good Shepherd sisters as ways to help their families and their children to grow in the mission. So we look forward to continuing this opportunity of uh, mission partners uh, across uh, North America. Uh, it has certainly enhanced uh, the mission, the charism. It has brought it to areas and to people that we would have no uh, other ways of telling the story and uh, enlivening uh, the mission. Thank you very much, sister.